Welcome to this demo on using Groby AI modeling. I'm Jerry Yurchison, data science strategist for Groby Optimization. In this video, we'll see how to use the output from the Groby AI modeling prompt engineer to formulate, code, and then solve a mathematical optimization problem dealing with the production and distribution of widgets. And this will be done using the, the AI modeling assistant. So let's dive in. Let's do a quick review of the process flow of using Groby AI modeling, which is composed of two agents, the prompt engineer and the modeling assistant. The prompt engineer is a conversational tool to help you produce a problem statement. And this problem statement fits a template for the modeling assistant to write the model formulation, which is the algebraic representation, and create code in Groby Pi, which will then solve. This video will focus on formulating, coding, and solving the model given a problem statement output from the prompt engineer. Our documentation site also has helpful tips for prompting, best practices, and tons of links uh, to learning resources to keep you going on your optimization journey. Use the QR code here to check out the documentation. And again, if you do, there's a survey link. Please let us know what you think. Always uh, looking to get some great feedback. In case you missed the prompt engineer video related to this problem, here are some example output from using the prompt engineer. We started with a high level statement saying that my company makes and distributes widgets that are produced in factories and shipped to distribution centers, having a data science team that creates a demand forecast uh, for the widgets for each distribution center. Is optimization useful for this? And the response being, yes, certainly optimization uh, can be a great uh, fit for your problem. And then ask to help uh, give some important information in order to apply mathematical optimization, looking at the demand and capacity, costs, constraints, objectives, what data do we have. So it's clearly really asking us to fill in all the bits and pieces of a mathematical optimization problem. So we replied with some information saying, I have a demand forecast, here are the, you know, I have costs, here's max and mins, here are some of the constraints and everything, essentially filling in a lot of the information that has been prompted for us to. And we got something finally that looks like this. Um, notice that at this point, the, uh, we noticed uh, that we have enough information for, uh, for a problem statement um, description to be written. And this uh, description identifies the objective, the decisions, constraints, and the data needed from the problem. And even notice at the top at this point that this problem was identified as a, a classic problem known as the transportation problem. Now that we have a problem statement prompt ready to go, let's use the modeling assistant to formulate code and solve our model to get the optimal decision for our widget transportation problem. You can use the QR code you see there to get to the Groby AI modeling assistant GPT. So now we'll see how the Groby AI modeling assistant picks up where the uh, prompt engineer left off and where the prompt engineer left off is uh, providing us with a, a problem sort of description of, of our widget production problem. And here's the context. Um, we produce widgets and we need to, um, whatever we produce, we need to uh, transport to, to uh, distribution centers. And we wanna, we wanna do that at minimal cost. So that's our objective, but we have a bunch of other constraints to consider. Uh, and a common step in between here is you have to do a little bit of tweaking of, of the prompt that you sort of paste in, I guess. Um, and and make sure that it has the specifics to the problem that you need and you, and if there's anything that's you know uh, small tweaks here and there that you may need to make you know th that's that's something that's definitely common but uh, one thing I want to highlight is is this here is uh, one of the constraints is that the demand at each distribution center must be met exactly um, you can actually sort of relax this a little bit and and uh, I'll show how to do that or describe what I mean by that. Um, in, in a minute or two, but uh, right now we have what we call an equality constraint, meaning that you know what, um, essentially what we produce must be must meet demand um, exactly at equality, um, and that may be a little little restrictive. Um, but for this simple problem, it really actually kind of doesn't matter. But um, if if you have an eye for these sort of things, if you have a little bit of experience here, you may you, you may um, have recognized that. But I just wanted to sort of briefly highlight that for now, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. But um, yeah, we have these um, minimum and maximum 
um, um, production constraints. And right now we just have a generic, hey, there's a percentage of, of our maximum capacity is the min capacity to, uh, that needs to be made. Uh, so let's actually put in a, uh, an actual number of 75%. Um, and then uh, everything else is sort of, we'll leave as is. Let's fill in some of the data for our production facilities. So we have, we need to name the facilities and we need to give the, the maximum production value because the minimum is then just calculated as a percentage from that. So we have our production facilities. Let's say we have one in Baltimore, Cleveland, Little Rock, Birmingham, and Charleston with these production values, max production values. And then again, again therefore the min is, is, is derived from that. We also have demand um, at our distribution uh, locations. So let's paste that in as well. So we have distribution centers um, in Columbia, Indianapolis, Lexington, Nashville, Richmond, and St. Louis. So we're essentially just pasting in some CSV information, the transportation costs. Now, instead of pasting that in, let's actually attach a CSV. So let's do that real fast. And send that off. So uh, we see we start with a, just a quick, let's look at the cost information. So you can expand that table and dive into that if you want to. And again, the modeling assistant starts off with with uh, loading in in uh, all the relevant data that's attached. And then first thing that we have is we have our problem definition. So we need to take all of the context and all of the words essentially and translate it into a little bit of uh, a little bit of math. So we have our sets for production facilities and distribution centers, parameters for a cost, min and max production and demand, and our decision variables, which are defined by XIJ, which is the quantity shipped. We need our object. Here's our objective function where we need to minimize the total transportation costs, and we have constraints um, for uh, our demand where we're meeting demand exactly. And again, here's where it may be. It's a little less restrictive to have a uh, what would have a greater than or equal to sign. So the sum um, over i or x i j um, should could be greater than or equal to um, d j. But um, in in this case. In this again, in, in this very specific and general uh, basic case, excuse me, um, the there is no difference there. But again, if your problem gets more complicated, there may be some differences there that you wanna that you wanna uh, and make sure that you have an inequality there. But um, we have our our um, uh, there's a little bit of redundancy here, um, but but by and large, you know, we have everything we need, so we build the model and solve. So we have our production data, our demand data, and um, min and max production values, our costs coming from the uh, transportation costs that we, that we uploaded. And here's where we sort of start seeing some uh, Groby Pi code um, where we initialize the model, we add decision variables here, we set our objective, um, to uh, where we're taking the cost times the amount that we produce and we are minimizing that. And we have constraints to meet demand exactly. We have our maximum bound, uh, maximum production, minimum production, so on and so forth. And uh, I'm kind of glad that it's actually um, <laughs> kind of, uh, we had the error here because sometimes this happens where um, it needs to reinstall Groby Pi um, and so that's just a quick thing that happens. All the code's the same. And we get a, uh, we get, uh, essentially when you see this, the, um, this log um, information from, from the optimizer, that means everything went uh, and solved. And Here we go. Here is our optimal solution. We can then dive into some uh, dive into the information here. So uh, we can look at at um, the table to figure out how much we're 
producing and shipping from various facilities and distribution centers and so on and so forth. So again, a great opportunity to then dive in with more questions. There are some, um, some key insights as well. And, um, and so I'll just sort of just leave it here and let you sort of um, try this out yourself and dive in and learn more about optimization modeling through generative AI. So thanks for tuning in, and if you would like to dive into this problem even more, uh, check out the training videos and hands-on material from Optimization 101 for Data Scientists, uh, which is a set of recordings from a live training I gave back in 2022 for optimization beginners, and we really expand on this problem and a bunch of other problems with lots of hands-on material uh, to get you going on your optimization journey. So enjoy.